My days flowed effortlessly and carefree, like a blissful vacation from the world. No school, no work, just me and my angel, Oleg. Every day, we would rendezvous at the park, where I would read to him from a book, painting vivid pictures with words. Together, we would embark on imaginary journeys to far-off lands, fueling our dreams and forging a bond that felt unbreakable. But today, a realization hit me like a sudden gust of wind. The book had reached its final page, and so I pondered our next move. Yet in truth, there was no real problem. We always found something to talk about, especially when I lacked the creativity to conjure intriguing topics. Each passing day revealed new facets of Oleg's extraordinary character. I hadn't been mistaken in recognizing his greatness. Life held profound beauty for him, even though he couldn't see it with his eyes. He always told me that he perceived the world through his heart. Today, I made up my mind to invite him to the seaside. I believed he would welcome the idea, and perhaps, finally, he would kiss me. Ever since our first touch a week ago, I have been yearning for his lips on mine. I could still feel the gentle touch of his hands exploring every inch of my body with a tender curiosity. Oh, dreams, how beautifully they unfolded. I was willing to live within them, for they brought me immeasurable joy. With a familiar motion, I picked up my cell phone, navigated to the incoming calls, and found his name at the top. We often spent hours conversing on the phone. I pressed the call button. The connection established, dial tone, dial tone, dial tone. I'm all ears, my beauty. Oleg's cheerful voice greeted me, as always. He had requested a distinct ringtone for my number so he could identify my calls. Hello there, I've been searching. The book has come to an end. And I've been thinking, perhaps we should go to the sea, unless you can't. What do you mean, I can't? He sounded genuinely surprised. Of course I can. Let's meet by the park around seven. I haven't experienced the sea in so long. The sound of the waves caressing the shore. It's a splendid idea. His words filled me with an overwhelming sense of joy. Tonight was the night. Today it was all or nothing. But nothing simply didn't fit my desires. All right. All right, see you later. I hung up the phone, carried away by the euphoria of my dream, and wandered into the kitchen, enticed by a delightful aroma. My senses guided me more than my sight. Today, my mother had prepared soy sauce wings, a dish I could never resist. Without a second thought, I devoured them all in one sitting. Mom looked at me, her eyes filled with amusement. Daughter, you've been floating on air all week, always on the move. Do you have a boyfriend? She winked at me conspiratorially. I averted my gaze slightly and nodded. Well, he's not exactly my boyfriend. We just talk. What do you mean, just talk? I can see it in your eyes. You're in love. Mom's words hit the mark. She had seen through my emotions. Doubts began to resurface along with the familiar fear. Mom, I started, my voice trembling. What's the matter? She seemed concerned, witnessing the transformation on my face, from a girl in love to a frightened woman. He's blind, and you're right, I love him. Silence enveloped the room as my words settled in. I could see thoughts racing through my mother's mind, a pulsing vein on her temple. Her eyes turned impenetrable as they peered into the void. She locked her gaze onto mine and spoke softly. As a mother, I cannot approve of this. But as a mother, I implore you, it's your choice, your decision. Yet, I beg you, think it through. Okay? My heart beamed with gratitude as I leaped onto my mom, hugging her and planting a kiss on her cheek. Thank you, mommy. You have no idea how much your support means to me. I love you.
Mom simply smiled back and gently stroked my head. Glancing at the clock, I noticed it was already six. The realization struck me, and in a whirlwind of excitement, I ate another wing, grabbed my beach bag with a blanket, and hurriedly prepared myself. The process was a blur. I dressed swiftly, packed the essentials, and found myself standing in the park. There he was, waiting by our usual bench, a leg. Clad in sunglasses, a black t-shirt, rolled up jeans, and flip-flops. I rushed toward him, embracing him tightly. This time, you didn't recognize me by the sound of my footsteps. I laughed, delighted. It was easy. You weren't wearing heels, but from now on, I'll always recognize you, he replied, hugging me back. A surge of intense emotion coursed through my veins as we clung to each other. Passion ignited, consuming us both. Ole quivered ever so slightly, and reluctantly he released me. Shall we go? I asked. Of course, he replied with a smile. I hooked my arm through his, and together we headed toward the bus stop. He folded his cane since he no longer needed it and I became his steady support. Our pace wasn't fast, but it exuded confidence. The journey to the sea took a mere 10 minutes by shuttle bus. Along the way, we recounted our respective days, transforming an apparently mundane topic into an enchanting exchange. We should alight here, I announced, assisting Oleg as we disembarked. Before I could retrieve the money to pay the fare, Oleg, wearing a serious expression, handed the driver three rivnias and called out the stop. Once off the bus, I guided him toward the sea. The scene before us was breathtaking. The sunset painted the sky with hues of red, pink, and lilac. Playful clouds adorned the heavens, one resembling a fluffy kitten. Ships sailed in the distance, gracefully awaiting permission to enter the port. As darkness descended, lights flickered to life in the town center, marking the arrival of the night's rain. I laid the blanket on the sand, intending to help Oleg sit down. However, he stopped me. Wait, I want to dip my feet in the water first, he said, a blissful look on his face. Agreeing, we left our shoes and belongings on the blanket and strolled toward the water. Oleg waded in his face radiating pure bliss at the touch of the sea, even just around his ankles. His joy was contagious, and I couldn't help but laugh along. Why are you laughing? he asked. I haven't been to the sea in ages. I adore it, even if I can only imagine the expression on my face. And we laughed together, our shared mirth connecting us. Returning to the shore, I helped Oleg settle down, snuggling up beside him. I yearned to be as close to him as possible without arousing suspicion. Please describe what you see, Oleg requested, his voice tinged with melancholy. My heart ached for him, for the first time truly comprehending the pain of his blindness. Taking a deep breath, I began to paint a vivid picture with my words. We're sitting by the water. Listen, you can hear it for yourself. The sun is setting, casting the sky in a palette of red, pink, and lilac. The clouds dance across the heavens, one resembling a fluffy kitten. People are still scattered on the beach, not far from us, slightly to the left. In the distance, a single ship glides on the sea, its colossal silhouette marking its presence. The town center's lights start to twinkle, signaling the arrival of the night, a rightful transition. That's how it looks. Thank you so much. I consider myself incredibly fortunate to have met you, Oleg replied, his face illuminated by a radiant smile. Sitting upright, he seemed to gaze into the distance, and I understood that he saw with his heart. Yielding to my desire, I rested my head on his shoulder. Oleg enveloped me in his arms, and together, we sat there for hours until darkness enveloped the surroundings.
We listened, a trio consisting of the sea, him, and my heart. With a playful yet tender gesture, Oleg planted a kiss on my forehead. Overwhelmed by tenderness, I couldn't help but whisper, I love you. There were no astonished exclamations in response, which I had dreaded. Instead, there was only a wordless reply, whispered gently, I love you too. Those words, spoken softly, echoed through me like fireworks exploding in the night sky. It was as close as I could get to describing the surge of emotions that flooded my being. Gazing up at him, he sensed it and turned to meet my eyes. We were so close, and though I couldn't see him with my eyes, my heart took over that responsibility. In an instant, our lips locked in a passionate kiss. His soft, gentle touch explored every inch of my body, my neck, my shoulders, my waist, my hips. A tender caress grazed my chest. The experience was indescribable, both unfamiliar and perfect, a culmination of desires. As our kiss reached its crescendo, he held me tight, and I nestled into the crook of his neck, breathing in his intoxicating scent. It wasn't a fragrance, but rather his essence, a scent that was now forever intertwined with mine. Abruptly, Ole broke away from our idyllic embrace, cupped my face in his hands, and turned my head to face him directly. With a mix of uncertainty and vulnerability, he asked, Are you sure? About what? I inquired, bewildered. About all of this. After all, I'm blind. I can't do certain things. I'm disabled, handicapped. Can you really be with someone like me? Tears welled up in my eyes, thankfully unnoticed by him. Gently extricating myself from his arms, I sat back, hugging my knees. Don't be silent, Oleg implored. I thought about it. I began, my voice choked with emotion. And I don't know. All I know is that I love you, and I'm terribly afraid. I'm ashamed of my fear, believe me. Buried in my lap, tears cascaded down my cheeks. How long had it been since I last cried? A year. Two? In that moment, all the tears I had suppressed came pouring out. Oleg tenderly embraced me, offering comfort. I understand, and I don't blame you. I love you for who you are, not because of your acceptance of my blindness, he reassured me. We sat there, entwined in each other's arms, listening to the waves as they whispered secrets to the shore. Time seemed to stand still as we embraced, finding solace in the knowledge that love transcends limitations and fears. As the night drew to a close, we slowly gathered our belongings and made our way back to the bus stop. Our journey home was quieter than before, each lost in our own thoughts, yet still connected through the intertwining of our fingers. The ride was a blur, but we held on to each other, the warmth of our entwined hands guiding us through the darkness. When we reached his stop, Oleg turned to me and spoke softly, Thank you for tonight. Thank you for showing me the sea, for describing the world to me, and for accepting me as I am. I pressed my lips against his, conveying all the love and gratitude I felt, before bidding him farewell. As the bus pulled away, I watched his silhouette recede into the distance, a bittersweet ache settling in my heart. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't help but replay the moments we shared, the touch of his lips, the sound of his laughter, the warmth of his embrace. And I knew, without a doubt, that love had found me in the most unexpected of places, as that Oleg's blindness was no obstacle for the love that bound us. Thank you for watching. I hope it was interesting. See you in the next story. Goodbye.